I'm like, listen, buddy, we do hard things. And he looks at me and he goes, if we do hard things, why are you climbing a mountain called I'm a dumb blonde instead of a real mountain like Mount Everest? I'm a de blom, honey, not <laughs> I'm a dumb blonde. <laughs> So we obviously have a full list of questions we want to ask you, Jen. But before we get into all the technical ones, what, I mean, you're an athlete. Mm -hmm. What does an athlete eat for breakfast? What did you have this morning? Um, This morning, eggs. I had eggs for breakfast. It was a healthy day. I'm glad you asked me today, not the day before, because I had Lucky Charms marshmallows for breakfast. Well, you're balanced then. Yes, balanced, overall balanced, yes. So I had eggs, um, an apple, and then tea. I drink tea for breakfast. Okay. All right. Yeah. Chai tea? Like what is... I, if I was going out, I'd have a chai tea for sure. Okay. But okay. at home, cinnamon. Cinnamon tea. Okay. Cinnamon tea. I love it. I yeah. love it. So you have most likely healthy breakfasts all the time. Um, what does it mean to you to be the first woman to have summited the seven second summits? Summits. Yeah. Seven second... That's that's a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister. Seven second summits. Did I get that right? Okay. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, I'm still taking it all in. Yeah. Right. I've been. It was a pursuit that I've been on for a few years. So for it to be done, I'm like sad a little bit. Yeah. Excited a ton, and still haven't quite embodied it yet. If I had to be honest. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's yeah. fair. Um, I mean, as both of us are females, right? We know that the, you know, long list of all the things that females have been through over the course of the years, um, for you to have achieved this, I mean, you're inspiring the next generation of women, girl record holders, right? That's got to be pretty. I mean, you're you're passing that torch. Yeah, right? And it's so fun to be a part of that story. Yes. To know that people before me made this opportunity for me. So when I stepped into it, I knew that every step I took was paving a path for somebody else to do something further, farther, unique, whatever, set their heart on fire. Um, So it's just fun to be part of that story. And also knowing that it might be me physically doing it, but it was a whole team of people behind me, supporting me, cheering me on. And I was doing it for them just as much as myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we obviously have to back up a little bit because there's a lot of people that are probably listening to this right now that have no idea, A, what the seven second summits even are and why on earth you would want to do them. So let's, I want to make sure that we tell your story the right way. So let's back way up. Yeah. Um, Tell me a little bit about, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. What does that look like? What does that mean for you? Yeah. So I... I started a business um, and grew it. Yeah. Right. Um, from me doing everything to eventually me doing about nothing except signing the accounting papers because my goal was to have a business that I owned, not a business that owned me. Mm. Um, a big transition to make during your life. So I did this. I start having children. I start hiring myself out of roles and. I'm the stay-at-home mom, which I was so excited for, but that was my vision. Like, I'm going to build the business, be a stay-at-home mom, and it kind of ended there. I don't know why I didn't think past that, but I didn't. Um, I was doing the stay-at-home mom thing, which anybody who's listening, if you're a stay-at-home mom, kudos. Amen. Kudos, 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 because that is a challenging job, harder than any other thing that I've taken on, for sure. Um, and I wouldn't say I was unhappy, but I wouldn't say I was living my best life at that point. Um, so fast forward a little bit and I get into a horrific car accident, like horrific car accident. I can see out of the corner of my eye that the semi is going to hit this right side of my car. And instantly I go, am I going to die? That's the first question I ask, am I going to die? And I I got this feeling, sensation, notice, whatever you want to call it, that said no. And so then this 20-second accident where I'm going end over end over end and then end up sideways is about 20 hours to me 
I have this ability to just surrender, to dilate time in the moment and be okay. I need to keep my hands on the steering wheel and you keep my head against the headrest and I just need to roll with the car. And I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna roll once, we're gonna roll twice, three times, and I end up on the side. And I remember sitting there thinking, waiting to be hit again, right? Hollywood has trained us yes. that another car's coming. Another car doesn't come. The windshield starts to get pulled down and someone's talking to me, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? And I realized, oh, he's talking to me. Am I okay? What's going on? And I didn't want to look because if I saw something that wasn't okay, I didn't know how to process. So I closed my eyes. Wow. And I wiggled my fingers and toes. And I was like, I'm okay. I can feel my fingers and toes. And he's like, I'm just going to sit here and keep talking to you until the ambulance comes. And then I can't move you because we don't know if something's blocking. Um, I said, okay. So we had this conversation. The ambulance came. Uh, they took me to the hospital just to double check something wasn't wrong. We have no clue to this day. Like the police have rebuilt that accident over 50 different times, trying to simulate what happened to make that area safer. There wasn't one scenario where I lived. They could not build a scenario where I lived. And that left me dumbfounded. Like, why was I saved? What did this mean? On top of this, a few weeks after my accident, a girlfriend of mine is running on a trail that we run on all the time. It's wet. She slips, hits her head, and dies instantly. And I'm just spun into this. This doesn't even make sense. Like, I survived this horrific thing. She does something that you would push a stroller on. And so 2019 was a year of what's my purpose? Why am I here? What impact can I have? If I don't get to choose when I leave this world, but I sure get to choose how I show up, I better be showing up. And that, you know, it's fast forward to 2020. Yeah. And I'm turning 40 in 2020. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'm going to start this decade with a banner something. And I decided I'm going to climb a mountain because that's a great thing to do to launch off my 40s. And I'm training for this mountain called Ama de Blom because that's the one that was most recommended to me from friends that were in the industry. Okay. Is it's, that the Paramount Mountain? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Paramount Pictures I mean, Mountain. Paramount Pictures. <laughs> some say it's Ben Lomond. We'll go with Alma de Blom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm yeah. like, okay, right? Yeah. Obviously, it's a beautiful mountain. It is a gorgeous mountain. So I'm training so for pretty. this mountain. COVID happens. I'm a homeschool teacher, and I'm doing all the homeschooling thing with the kids. And my son says to me, I'm like struggling with his homework, right? And he's yeah. like, doesn't want to do it. And I'm like, listen, buddy, we do hard things. And he looks at me and he goes, if we do hard things, why are you climbing a mountain called I'm a dumb blonde instead of a real mountain like Mount Everest? I'm a de blom, honey, not <laughs> I'm a dumb blonde, but that's cute. It is cute. Yes. <laughs> so then I said, you know what? You do your homework. We'll look at Everest. So we looked at Everest and I thought about it and I realized his perception is his reality. And maybe I should look at climbing Everest because I want him and everybody else to know that you're capable of climbing your Everest, whatever that may be. So I sign up for Everest. I have a coach. He's gave me a book to read. In the front of this book, it talks about a lady who got a Guinness World Record for skiing across the Alps. I'm half joking, because I've been homeschooling forever, that to my coach, I could have done that. I can suffer. And if I would get a Guinness World Record, my kids would think I'm cool. That's how they learned how to read. Right. But I'm not eating hot dogs and I'm sure not growing a pumpkin. So like that's where I'm at. And we kind of like let it go and whatever. And then a couple weeks later, he calls me back and he's like, Jen, 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 I've got the perfect idea. OK, what is it? Like, I think you should climb the seven second summits. Seven continents, seven mountains, seven kids. Sounds like a jackpot to me. Um, and I said, oh, hasn't been done by a woman is respectable within the peers of the industry yeah let's try it that's kind of how that pursuit started that's amazing that's yeah. amazing so i want to go back to your son yeah tell me what is what does it mean when you say we do hard things yes um you know everybody has their own definition of hard 
Yeah. So I'm not here to tell you what your heart is, just like you're not here to tell me what my heart is. But anytime we want to expand who we are or experience life, there's going to be something hard because we haven't done it before. We don't have experience with it. So if we train ourselves to say we do hard things, whatever that hard is for you, then you expect it and you know how to overcome it. I love that. I love that. My, um, so speaking of, we were talking earlier, me and my kids went to Lagoon yesterday, right? Went to bed way later. We're like the eight o'clock, 8 p.m. Head hits the pillow family. Um, it was 11 when my daughter, who's nine, is laying her head down. And she had ballet this morning at eight, oh. right? So I go to wake her up this morning. She's like, mom, I can't do it. I can't go. And I'm like, we do hard things. I know this from Jen. <laughs> nice, <laughs> so if nice. anything, you inspired that this morning. Woo-hoo! So thank you. We'll take it. So thank you. So um, we do hard things. The seven second summit. So did you climb Everest? I did. Did you climb Alma de Blom? I did. Okay. So yes. you've got not only the seven second summits, but the other two as yeah, well. Yeah, and a few others in the mix, but yes. And a few others in the mix. Yes. So, I mean, obviously you've been super active, all of these things over years, right? It's not like you turn 40 and you're like, I'm going to climb, climb a mountain because I've never done it before. Um, but how, how do you go from, I'm going to climb Everest, making that decision to actually doing it? One step at a time, as much as we hear that message, but yeah. I, I backed into it. So like any goal we set, I want to be here by this date. What do I need to do today to close that gap and okay. to get the gain? So you climb Everest in May and it was July. Luckily, I, had a, I was training for Ama de Blom already. So that fitness carries over and accumulates. Um, we did add a little bit longer days when Everest came in. Um, to the picture. But yeah, just really starting with the end in mind and then figuring out where my skill sets were, where my weaknesses were, what we needed to do to train and how that looked. Okay. Okay. So, and just breaking that down into breaking your daily down. steps. Yeah. Okay. So, um, on, I mean, you have your own podcast, so this is maybe fun to be on the other side <laughs> oh, of it so where fun. you interview, <laughs> right? A lot of other people, but tell me about on your podcast, you talk a lot about setting goals. Yes. And finding purpose and all of that. But tell me the importance of goal setting. Why is that so foundational for people? Um, not only those that are entrepreneurs that have been successful that are on to the next step, but just anyone that is watching today. What is the importance of setting a goal? I think setting goals helps us build confidence okay. because we have these little achievements that we can gain momentum from and carry them forward into all the things that we do. I also feel like life happens fast, right? Like you can stop and think, oh my goodness, my child's this age or this happened or whatever. And if you don't have goals or stop for a second and say, what do I want this year to mean? What do I want my life to look like? It can all of a sudden just erode and disappear. And all of a sudden 10 years is gone. So I really feel when we set goals, it helps us stay true to our purpose. And it helps us make the most of each day. I love that. I love that. Because you have to live with that intentionality, right? Or to your point, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So um, first of all, let's back up a little bit too, back to your son. You're a mom of seven children. I know. Yes. I mean, talk about hard. Forget Everest. That's a walk in the park. Right. And, the, you know, the seven children was hard from the beginning because here's the deal. I couldn't, I struggled to get pregnant. Right. So I had all those failed months, right? Where you're like hoping you're getting pregnant and then it comes back and it's negative. You're hoping, or, and then you're pregnant for a little bit and then you lose it, right? Like all those emotions were so hard at the beginning. So I went down the fertility road to get assistance and nothing worked, nothing worked. And here I am, like, I'm a female. I'm supposed to have babies and I can't. Like, what does this even mean? Like, why can't I do the one job? I was born to do that is supposed to be natural. Right. Um, so it was a very big struggle. Finally, one of the treatments like went gangbusters, right? They changed something up and it was the magic formula that turned me into a hen and we got 28 eggs in one of these harvests, right? <laughs> so it <laughs> was like, awesome. what happened? So then they put the eggs and the other parts into a dish and they fertilized. 
And of those 28 eggs, 14 fertilize. And of those 14, they rank them. Um, you know, what's the chance of this becoming a child, blah, 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 blah. So I have my first son. And I don't really even think about the embryos because I, I think I was so focused on having my first son, I didn't really pay attention to all the aspects of things. Yeah. So I get a bill from the fertility clinic and I find out I have all these embryos. So I'm like, what do I do with these? And they said, you have three choices. You can donate them, you can use them, or you can destroy them. And so I'm like, okay, well, we'll use them. What do you think the odds are of this being what it is? And like, well, probably three or four kids could come. I, I grew up Catholic. I can do that. Like, I, we have a, my dad's one of 13. Three or four, I can handle three or four. I'm four in, I still have embryos. I'm five children in, I still have embryos. The last two embryos became twins and I have seven children. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome, right? It's a crazy, busy seven, but every day I'm grateful for it. Well, and tell me about gratitude too, right? Because we all have heard, oh, if you're grateful, you'll always have what you need. You don't yeah, want, yeah, yeah. you know, all the things. But is, do you have a daily gratitude practice? Like, what does that look like for you? Okay, so I have to be honest here. Yeah. Um, that's a struggle for me. So I've, I figured out a way to get in into my life. We have a red light by my house and it's, I live on the short side, right? So like I always get the red light. And so I'm grumpy every time I hit this red light. And I realized the red light doesn't care that it's red. Only I care that it's red and I'm grumpy every time. So I'm not good at doing the gratitude list in the morning or the gratitude journal. But what I did is I said, oh, this red light, this is my gratitude light. That's the only way I'm gonna win with this red light. So every time I hit that light red, that's my trigger to start thinking of all the things that I'm grateful for. And it's been so powerful that sometimes I'm mad when I hit a green. I'm like, oh man, I missed my red light opportunity, right? But another thing that I do, and I learned this from one of my climbs, is I actually have a grump dump. Okay. Okay, because there's grumpy things that happen and I need to get those out. And so when everybody's talking about their gratitude list, if you looked at my journal, it's me like, complaining about everything that you can think of <laughs> from someone didn't replace the toilet paper roll or the bathroom to whatever. But I feel if I get that grump out, I'm a much more balanced person. And that's maybe how I express gratitude. I love that. I yeah. love that. So we flipped the switch a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I love the grump dump. Yeah. But at the same time, incorporating that gratitude practice into your daily life. Yes. Right. It's not something, oh, I've got to sit down for 10 additional minutes in the morning of the 10 minutes that I could be doing something else for myself and write my list. Right. You've got it at your it red light. It turned it from yeah. an obligation to an opportunity. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think if there's red lights in your life, whether they're literal or metaphorical, how can you turn those into an opportunity? I love that. I love that. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, so tell me about going from a little bit more, you said a day at a time, you got to Everest, you got to the seven second summits and all the other mountains in between. Yeah. Um, what do you, I mean, you, you say you start each day with a new thing. How are you afraid of heights? Like, how do you just go for cl like climbing Mount Everest? Let's just go for it. Okay. Well, let's just say I didn't know I was afraid of heights okay. and, and then I found out I was okay? Oh, okay. Because I can do skyscrapers. I can do chairlifts. I can do all this kind of stuff. But I remember being like, okay, well, I need to learn how to climb, especially one of the Mount Kenya is a climb, rock, shoes, harness, all that kind of stuff. And so I hire a guide and we go climb in the cottonwoods and I get up to 10 feet and I'm fine. And then I get up to 11 feet and I'm like shaking on the wall, like totally shaking. And so I came down, I'm like, Oh my God, I just told everybody I was going to climb these seven second summits and I'm scared out of my life right now. What do I do? And I'm sweating and I'm, the coach is like, you know what? You're going to go up and you're going to just go one handhold higher. And so I would go up this wall, I'd go one handhold higher and then I came back down. And then I went up again and I went one handhold higher and then I came down. And then I found out that after 35 feet, I'm not scared of heights anymore. But for some reason, between 10 feet and 35 feet, I am scared of heights and I had to work that out of my system. It wow. was challenging. It was one step at a time and I'm so grateful it wasn't forever and it was just that 35 feet visual piece of it. And That's I, incredible though. Yeah, it's crazy. And I think we need to keep that in mind like when we're pursuing things 
there might be like that climb, a struggle between 10 and 35 feet, but then you start smooth sailing again. So you just got to keep going, just one handhold higher in whatever you're doing, because you might find your sweet spot.